chat. Welcome to Michael Monday. <laughs> What's happening, man? What's happening, my people? What's happening to you? I am way too old to use that kind of language. Um, instead, let's have a look at what's happened this week at West Ham. That way, let's go. Well, people, it's been a busy, busy week at West Ham. On Monday, uh, the Tory Graph published an article saying that... David Moyes will be going in the summer. No matter what happens, if he keeps us up and finishes in the top 10, if we get relegated, Moyes is out, they are saying. Um, the reason for this is they are having bigger, he's been having big argument with the board about transfers and not getting the players that he wants in. Um, the club came out straight away to refute this. It's quite an unusual move on their behalf to say that it's complete rubbish. We'll have a meeting and we will decide. Uh, what will happen with David Moyes at the end of the season. Uh, kind of missing the point of the article, which was saying that Moyes will be leaving us regardless, not that we won't keep Moyes. They can't actually do anything about that bit, can they really? Uh, but there you go, apparently all a big argument over uh, the sort of players that we're getting in. And as if to prove it, on Tuesday, West Ham shocked everyone by signing 63-year-old former Manchester United left-back Patrice Ever for the rest of the season on reputed 75 grand a week. Nice work board. Um, David Moyes apparently really wanted him and uh, we saw how much he really wanted him by not playing him at all in any way shape on Saturday but you know maybe he doesn't fit. I don't know. Um, of course we all know Patrice Evra was uh, sacked earlier this season by Marseille and banned from all European competition, competition by UEFA but apparently he can play in the Premier League but he was banned for um, severing the arm of a supporter in a uh, ritual sacrifice and uh, that got him thrown out of the club. So um, there you go. Uh, ironically, uh, Marseille have just hired former West Ham employee Tony Henry as head of racism, therefore completing that circle. Uh, the week has been really dominated by, uh, Bob, from fans' point of view, uh, on forums and on channels like this, etc. By lots and lots of talk about this proposed march, which is going ahead to protest against the board. The march is taking place on the 10th of March. Uh, there's a sort of link to info in the, uh, in the in the comments below, in the uh, info section below. And uh, a lot of people talking about that. It seems to be dominating the West Ham agenda at the moment. Uh, and a lot of people discussing what they um, hope to achieve with it. Um, from my point of view, I'll be going on the march. From my point of view, it is, um, I'm going purely to let the uh, no, board know that uh, I'm dissatisfied and I think that's the best we can hope for. The board realised the level of disc discontent within the supporter community. Uh, however, uh, some people are saying that the people who are organising this, the Real West Ham fan supporters group, are um, doing this because they want the board removed totally and they want to bring in the Manchester City owners on loan as our owners for the next season for some investment. So uh, we'll see how far they get with that then, shall we? Uh, on Thursday, a major news story broke, uh, following on from the Tony, race, uh, Tony Henry racism scandal, another major story broke, uh, and this time involving Karen Brady. And it appears that Karen Brady has been hiring, allegedly, child labour to do manual cleaning work in her house. Please, Miss Brady, can we stop? There you go, guys. Um, proof that Karen Brady uh, is forcing children to work in horrific conditions. Saturday rolled round and it was match day and um, a surprisingly attacking looking team. We wrote, uh, Moyes put out for the game against Watford uh, at home at London Stadium. I was there and um, most has been covered. I'm uh, some of my views in the game and uh, Gonzo's vlog again. Uh, really worth looking at actually. Really good. I'm not in it that much but, <laughs> but um, really excellent vlog. Gonzo's vlogs on Hammer's chat of the, of the games he goes to are really, really classy and I recommend you check them out. There's a link to this one's just below. And um, but what was really interesting was that lineup, man. But full, full um, thumbs up to Jed. On, we were on the boats before when we saw the lineup, and um, most people predicted um, a four at the back. It's Richard four at the back, and um, Jed was like called it completely right, including putting Antonio uh, to left wing back, which is where he turned out to be. But anyway, do you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself um, because we've got Mike here in the tactics centre and he's going to look at how we lined up tactically with that, for that game and he's got a special assistant uh, this week helping him out. Uh, something to do with the fact it is half term and the kids are off school, I suspect. But anyway, Mike, 
Um, we beat Watford, as everyone knows, on Saturday 2-0. What happened tactically, mate? Take us through it. Thanks, Mike. Welcome to the Tactic Centre. This Saturday, West Ham played Watford and beat them 2-0 at the London Stadium. And to help me go over the tactics for this game, I've got my lovely seven-year-old daughter, Emma Rose. And uh, yeah, so in the, uh, we won the up at half time, West Ham were. In the second half, we were put under a lot of pressure from Watford, using quick players to cut in from wide and attack us through the middle there uh, at, at pace. No, Dad, it what? went like this. So it went down here and across here. Yeah, as I was saying, what happened was Watford used uh, quick players out wide, hugging the touchline to go straight down here uh, and to the byline and whipping crosses to key striker um, Troy Deeney, who was uh, attempting and successfully attempting at times to find room inside our penalty area. No, Dad, Ginger had Deeney in his pocket for the whole game. Look, Dad, he's still in there now. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, so there you go, a big fat dinosaur who is Troy Deeney still in Ginger's pocket even today. Uh, so that's it for this week's Tactic Centre, a comprehensive in-depth analysis of uh, West Ham 2, Watford 0. Dad, is this why you don't have a job? And now back to Mike in the studio. Thanks, Mike. Absolute class stuff. Oh, how that's not on Sky Sports, I don't know. Um, right, um, on to your questions now. Thanks so much for all of the things you've been sending in to me um, over the last week. We've had uh, comments, and do feel free to leave a comment below. You've got any questions, you can leave a comment or ask questions. Uh, we've had people email me at... And my email address is at WHU Mike. And um, so do follow me because I do put stuff up on Twitter as well. And um, yeah, and it's been brilliant. Thanks for sending all those through. Those through. And uh, let's have a look at what you've been asking me over the last um, week just gone. Let's go. It's uh, that way this time. <laughs> And straight on to this week's letters, and uh, well, they're not really letters, you're sending me in the mail, but you know, uh, tweets and uh, messages sent through me on the comments left below, etc, etc. And the first one via Twitter comes from, I don't know how you say it, get or jet, uh, G-E-P underscore W-A-U. Thanks so much for this. And he asks, are you of Italian descent? I only asked you to your unusual surname. Now, my surname is Italian because my dad's Italian. That, that, that's where it comes from. You're bang on, mate. Well spotted. Um, my dad from northern Italy uh, and um, met my mum in Italy and um, when she was over there traveling many many years ago clearly and um, and uh, I, but I was born here and uh, I'm English but I'm, I'm the least Italian person ever apart from um, you know the obligatory being able to drink wine eat pizza and pasta that's I've got those genes oh and the uh, born coward one as well I've got that actually that's about fair and Italians and even my dad my dad was um, was a typical alpha male type Italian, and uh, I've always wondered though why, given the fact my mum speaks fluent Italian, she lived in Italy for five years before I both moved here, and, and my dad said, Why? I asked my mum a few years ago, I said, Mum, why? When I was young and you had the chance, did you, why the fuck didn't you teach me Italian? You know, and kids absorb languages really easily, and she was like, Wow. When you were little, your dad had only just moved to England and his English wasn't very good. So we decided to help him with his English, only to speak English in the house. And that would make sense, I could see the logic in that, but we failed in one big way, he never improved his English. My dad spoke a bizarre uh, twist of broken pigeon cockney and Italian words in totally the wrong place. Uh, but as I was saying, he's a, a pure, he's a very big, um, weird guy, really, who, who, who was just like the pure alpha male, um, a typical Italian cliche of a guy. Uh, he, he says he was the, uh, he told me he was the um, Italian amateur boxing heavyweight champion. Uh, I know he was in the Navy for three years, even though he can't swim, which I too, it's just lunacy, isn't it? But he, um, um, but he would do mental things all the time. And my dad, 
here's the interesting thing. I was brought up in, in a council flat, um, which if, you, if you're from overseas, that's where we put our poor people uh, back then. And, um, and uh, I was brought up in a council flat in Lewisham, as I've said before, uh, very modest income. My dad uh, drove a bus um, and um, for a living. And um, yeah, and, um, but my dad was also quite a heavy hitter in the mafia uh, in his head that he wasn't at all in the Mafia in any way, shape or form, but in his head, he was in Goodfellas. And he would do weird stuff to try and convince us, his family, uh, that he was in uh, the Mafia. I'm going to give you a great example. One year, we were always from this annual pilgrimage to see his parents um, by car in, in Northern Italy. We'd, we'd go see his parents, my grandparents, and one year, about to leave, I was about eight, and he called me over, and this is genuinely how he talked to me. He's like, uh, eh, Michele. Come over here. There is something I want to show you. So I went over to him, and from underneath this uh, table, he pulls out a black leather holder. And he unzipped this holder, and he said, Michele, I want you to see this with your own eyes. I looked in, looked in the holder. It's stuffed full of cash. And my dad, in, in <laughs> full Godfather voice, said, uh, Michele, look at this. One. Million Lira. Yeah, it was worth about 40 quid. I mean, I all knew that at the time. I think we spent McDonald's or something. Well, what a nutter. Uh, he, he knew all sorts of weird stuff. Like, I remember once coming back from school, it was about 11 or 12, and it's that point where you are just learning about the world, you know, and you're not just, just not like, you're not just like reading, writing, arithmetic, but you know, how the world operates. And, um, I came, I came home from school and he said to me, uh, it's three, uh, but my dad's not interested in me learning. He just wants to prove that he's in Goodfellas, you know. He just said to me, uh, hey, Michele, what did you learn today at that, that, that place you go, the, the, the place, uh, school? Yeah, what did you learn in that school today, Michele? And I was like, what, well, Dad? Um, today, today, I was 10, do you know what I mean? I'm learning about the world. Today, we learned all about Einstein today. My dad's like, Einstein! He is a clever man, no? Clever man. Uh, I said, yes, Daddy. Now I am vulnerable 10, learning about the world. Is it true, Daddy, I said? Is it true that Einstein's dead? My dad just wants to prove that he's in good thread. I said, it is true, yes. Einstein is dead. I said, why, Daddy? Why? Why did a man as clever as Einstein have to die? I'm 10, 10. And my dad, without missing a beat, I swear it's true, without missing a beat, he just went, uh, well, uh, Einstein, he knew too much. Yeah, that's just gonna mess you up. That's why I'm the weird guy you see before you now. But many thanks tonight, Jep, um, uh, Jep underscore WHU. Uh, much appreciate the question. Uh, next one's from Neil Parker, it's a bit more West Ham related. Um, do I think the march, um, where the march in March will that improve our pathetic, the pathetic situation we are in? Thanks for that, Neil. Well, I'm Neil Parker. Thanks for that. I've already sort of covered it earlier. I just think. What I think we'll get out of it is um, just to show that we're, we're pissed off at them. I, I think that's all it can really do, because there's too many people now coming up with too many different ideas of what it's about, but it didn't really matter. I just think as long as we go and we are solid and it's trouble free and um, it goes ahead and, and we turn up in our thousands, they will see the level of discontent. I, I thought the, the supporters and the game on Saturday were superb. Right behind the team, we still do that. But outside the ground, we can show how annoyed they are with them. I don't have solutions. I don't think anyone really has solutions. But really, they're supposed to be clever people. Maybe they could come up with something. They just need to be shown how really we've had enough of the way things are going at the moment. Our third question comes from uh, Jamie100580. That's uh, a great name, Jamie. Uh, trust it's not your family name. Um, but he asks, what's your favourite West Ham kit? Um, of all time. Now, I've covered this at length uh, a number of weeks ago, about months ago, definitely last year. If you want to plough through the back catalogue of Michael Monday, you will actually find quite a big bit where I go on my favourite. I've got a load of 
uh, vintage shirts that I've brought through the years and a couple of the retro ones and talked about it. So I don't really want to cover that ground again in detail. I will quickly mention to you, uh, from in modern times, I think the best shirt we've had in modern times is, of course, the uh, last season of the Bolin shirt, which is good. And out of my shirt collection, probably my pride and joy is, uh, is this one. This is... Um, the match worn shirt as worn by Manuel Lanzini in that season. Look at that, an actual match worn shirt. The sponsor come up, never mind. Worn by Manuel Lanzini that season. Brilliant. And uh, um, yeah, that covers that. But do go through, feel free to plough through my back catalogue of those uh, Michael Munn. There's quite a lot of these now. And, um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Now, there's no uh, game uh, this weekend. Well, there is, but we're not in them because it's FA Cup weekend and we were knocked out a few weeks ago by the uh, dreadful performance that we, we managed to put up against Wigan. But I will be back next week, but a few notices before I go there. I'm going to do a special film, not on Michael Monday, that will probably be similar in style, but uh, a special film that I'm planning to do before the season's out, uh, collating some film of people talking about how they came to be a West Ham supporter. For a lot of people, it's dead straightforward. They're from the East End of London or Essex, and um, their dad's a Bramley supported West Ham and took them when they were young, and that's it. But for many, many people I talk to, it's not that simple. Certainly, got a lot of West Ham fans who come down from, uh, as even people I know from up north, like John or uh, Scotland, like uh, Geo. Uh, and it'd be really interesting just to get um, their stories. And I'm, I'm, I didn't come that way. I mean, like, uh, um, so I'll cover it in the film. But uh, if you want to get involved in that, if you just want to talk about how you came to Fort West Ham and maybe your first game as well, let me know and I'll, I'll turn up with a camera somewhere, meet you before a game or something, and uh, and get your story on film, because I think it would be a really fun thing to do. And uh, put together and just get those stories around, and maybe something we could publish in the summer and the close season. I don't know, but we'll do something with it and put it on the Hammers chat. So do let me know. Uh, either comment below or better still send me a message through Twitter or, or whatever on uh, I, again I'm at WHU Mike uh, on Twitter so um, get in touch so no game this week I will be back next week like um, like a <laughs> persistent cold sport or um, bank charges I will return next week with another Mike on Monday uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one if you have please give it a thumbs up feel free as I say to leave any comments get in touch on Twitter all the rest of it make sure you subscribe to both Hammers Chat channels is this one and the main one is this one, except there's two of them. Make sure you subscribe to both to get all the content. It's classy stuff. And um, I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Until then, have a great week, people. Don't lose the faith and uh, come on, you irons. Thanks for watching. Come on, you irons.